chapter five, who is the man on the white dragon? So in the past was Hiccup's father and the chief of the Hera Hooligan tribe. He was a man built on generous lines, uh, with a belly like a battleship and a beard like a electrocuted Afghan hound. He'd been having a peaceful after lunch nap in the surprising warmth of the afternoon when he was rudely awoken by a couple of his warriors chattering on about a fire on the highest point and how the pirate training program was up there herding reindeer. Stoic immediately feared the worst. Stoic normally wasn't of a fearful nature, but his father-in-law, Old Wrigley, who was a Strusser, had been warning Stoic for weeks that the omens were saying that Hiccup was in danger. <gasps> oh dear, Stoic had laughed this off, for Stoic was uh, not a great thinker or a warrior, even though for a small skinny boy who didn't look up to much, Hiccup did seem to get an extraordinary number of very dangerous situations. Call out the fire brigade, bellowed Stoic, gumping out of bed and leaping for the door, dressed only in a rather fetching pair of hairy underpants that his wife, Valhalla Roma, had brought back for him from one of her quests abroad. She's always away questing. Valhalla Roma. When you live side by side with dragons, you have to have an extremely efficient fire brigade, obviously, because they're always setting fire to things. Even though um, most dragons try not to um, fire breathe necessarily, the hunting and riding dragons were um, always accidentally shedding fire to the furniture or, or the thatch because they have thatched houses. And on these occasions, the fire brigade could be on the scene in two minutes flat. The fire brigade consisted of a whole fleet of water dragons, so called because their stomachs can distend to carry extraordinary amounts of water ridden by fire warriors, specially trained in fighting fires. It took a little longer than two minutes on this occasion, for the highest point was some flying distance away from Fulligan village, but within a relatively short space of time, the entire brigade was there, the dragon swooping down into the sea below to scoop off huge amounts of water from the sea, and then shooting it out onto the blaze. Their efforts were pretty hopeless, of course, because this wasn't a tiny little matter of a hunting dragon setting fire to a bedspread, but an entire <laughs> burning mountain side. By the time Stoic arrived half naked on the back of his riding dragon, the fire was flaming as strongly as ever. Gloomily watching the blaze was a bedraggled line of pupils from the pirate training programme, darkened and unrecognisable through the smoke. Hiccup, stammered Stoic, dismounting from his riding dragon and wiping the smeariness from the face of the nearest boy in the pathetic hope that it might be his son. Where is Hiccup? Sadly, Waterhawk shook his head and pointed a grubby arm at the mighty blaze in front of them. No! shouted Stoic, tearing out his uh, tearing his beard, staring at the blazing woods. And out of the fire ran the Windwalker as fast as he could. And he came to a stop among the waiting Vikings. Hasty hands scrabbled at the cloak, unwrapping it with such speed that Hiccup fell out onto the heather. He found himself looking straight up into the anxious face of his father. Stoic the Vast and the heads of several other warriors. Behind those heads was the bright blue sky and further back even than that was the flaming highest point, a great funeral pyre for Goliath and the reindeer. But not for Hiccup, not this time. As Hiccup stumbled onto the, his back, his helmet fell off, off and a hot cross toothless fell out. Me, me, Master scolded Toothless. Hiccup, very lucky, nice, kind Toothless, not pee pee on his head. Mm -hmm. But then the little dragon forgot his anger immediately when he caught sight of the glorious burning bonfire. Ooh, fire! squeaked Toothless in excitement and he flapped off hurriedly to play in the flames. He's alive! bellowed Stoic the Vast in astonished delight. How are you alive? was Stoic's next baffled question. Hiccup pointed to something. Or someone? standing quietly some way behind Stoic's shoulder. The man on the white dragon, with the gobber sitting behind him. He saved me, said Hiccup. The gobber clambered down from the white dragon. He was totally black from high eyebrows to toenails, apart from the small pink top of his bald helmetless head, which shone in the sunlight like a halo. Look, that's toothless playing hide and seek in the flames, because dragons are fairly fireproof, so they can play in fire, which would be really good fun, actually, wouldn't it? I can explain, Chief stammered. Not a gobba. It was perfectly harmless, herding reindeer on dragonback lesson. Nothing dangerous about it at all. And then we were attacked by these things. 
Goliath didn't make it. Oh, I'm sorry, Gobba said so at the vast solemnly. Goliath had been Gobba's faithful riding dragon through many a terrible battle. We shall take revenge on whoever did, but did this, I assure you. He saved us, said Gobba, pointing to the man. Who is that? asked Stoic. Who is that man? Can't be a man, pointed out Baba. Men don't walk foot through fire. He must be a god. I'm not a god, said the man on the white dragon. His voice was rather muffled by a black suit that that covered him from head to toe, even his eyes and mouth, and Hiccup was wondering um, who, uh, how he could see through it. I'm just a hero, I mean, an ordinary bloke who happened to be passing, said the man. I think this is the hero, the hero who doesn't want to be a hero anymore. OK, I'm just an ordinary bloke who happened to be passing, continued the man. In fact, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I've got something important to do now, so I must be off. Lovely to meet you and everything. You seem like nice little people in your way. You're a lava lout, roared Stoic, staring at the man. All the watching hooligans gasped in horror and drew their swords immediately. Lava louts were one of the hooligan tribe's deadliest enemies. I am not a lava lout, protested the man indignantly. Lava louts are gorillas in trousers, and that's a bit of an insult to gorillas. You are so a lava lout, exclaimed Kurt Stoic. Only low down, double crossing, mean as sharks, lava lout wear, ga like, wear lava louts wear that kind of a suit. The hooligans growled in agreement and pressed forward, waving their swords and checking the sharpness of their axe edges, crying, Kill him, kill him, lava lout vermin. That's not very, that's not very grateful of him. This is a person who just rescued Hiccup. Bags, I kill him first, chief, yelled Beggar Burn the Beer Belly. I haven't had a lava lout in ages. Get to the back of the queue, bang him, you villain, roared Tough Not Senior. You're always pushing in front of anyone, everybody else. I am not a lava lout, called the man as loudly as he could through his muffly head. Yeah, oh, for Thor's sake, you do a good deed and see where it gets you. In the suit yet again, why do I never learn? Bother this far suit. I'll take it off and then you'll see. Afraid that we can't see until tomorrow because this is quite a long chapter. We'll find out tomorrow who the man on the white dragon is.